you are one of my favorites, just so you know. Oh, thank you. I, I don't it. say that to flatter. That's that's sincere. But we've started recording, so now it's recorded. You said you said that on a camera. <laughs> okay. Hey, Didi, thank you so much. I appreciate it. I know you've been, uh, you, you have my book and things like, and I did not expect that because, in fact, I came across your company uh, because I connected with my colleague Brian Hoyer to create a new class called Electropollution Fix. And, you know, I was aware of uh, Stedzer uh, plugins and we'll get into dirty electricity. So if you're not following right now, don't worry about it. We'll talk about what all those are. The green waves and then he told me nick something new that we're doing is that we're filtering dirty electricity with these products from satic uh and then uh, i came across uh, you as the owner of the company i'll let you introduce yourself what your company is about and how you came to this industry around dirty electricity you can even maybe start by what the heck is dirty electricity because if someone doesn't have context maybe they're going to get lost in this conversation sure um Thank you for having me. I'm, I'm really privileged to be here. Uh, dirty electricity was not something that I knew about um, before this adventure. Um, it was not on my sphere. It's also something like carbon monoxide. You can't see it. You can't smell yeah. it. You can't taste it. So, you know, it's hard to really measure just with your own body, whether or not it's there or real. And, mm -hmm. you know, while we'll explain and we'll prove that it's harmful, it's not harmful like backing into a propeller. You back into a <laughs> propeller, yet you, you're injured right now, right? But yeah. let's say, let's say you smoke a couple of cigarettes in college. You know, is it good for you? No, it's not good for you, Nick. But does it kill you? No, I think you're probably okay, right? Yeah. So, yeah. so the thing with dirty electricity is, it is real, it is measurable, and it's been proven harmful. But it's not so harmful that you feel the effects immediately. It's more a collective thing. And also, you know, I, I know a grandma that's 90 years old right now, and she's she's 90 and smoking and drinking. Yeah. Um, you know, smoking didn't 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 get her. But I also know people that are 55 and they have, you know, lung cancer or they mm -hmm. have, you know, emphysema or something. And so it's also one of those things that doesn't necessarily get everybody the same way. And that's really that's my story. So. About 15 years ago, my wife um, graduated um, college with a grad degree in geology and was killed by a drunk driver in an auto accident. And so we were living on Hawaii. She was a geologist getting her uh, degree actually in volcanology, specializing in, in volcanoes, right? Mm -hmm. So my son and I moved from Hawaii to Montana to be closer to all of our families because this is where we're from. He and I were both born in Missoula, Montana. I was actually born in the same hospital as my mother. So upon moving home, we kind of in haste bought a new home. Now that home is situated under, not directly under, but really, really close um, to under the biggest power lines in our town. And wow. we, believe it or not, didn't even notice them. We went, we looked at the house. It fit our needs. It was in a nice neighborhood. We went for it. About a week or so later, he and I were on the deck out back, and I was like, holy moly, how did we miss these huge power lines? Yeah, I didn't like them because they're ugly. I never thought about that maybe being bad for our health. I just never put it together. Well, when we were in Hawaii, I mean, he had a great record as a student. He had straight A's. Um, he had perfect attendance. And the first year home, although we were very sad, very lonely, we missed mom terribly, he and I. Um, his grades were still good. He was still a good academic student. He still was to class on time. Within about a year, um, his grades began to really slip and, and substantially his attitude slipped. He suffered terribly. It, um, good sleep escaped him. Uh, he was no longer calm spirited. He was a little more uh, irritable. He was very anxious. Um, and so at first I thought, you know, it was you know, missing mom. And he had this incredible, beautiful, smart, capable mom, best mom ever in our opinion, you know? Um, and so I really kind of attributed it to the adjustment of not having her. <clears throat> and I began to get sad myself because I really felt like I was failing him as a dad that, you know, the X factor maybe was some poor parenting on my part too. Well, after a while, you begin to, to be your own doctor a little bit when you're, when your child, someone that you love and care about, has symptoms, you can't help ask people at school, ask people at work, ask people at your church, maybe Google it. And his symptoms lined up 
was something called EHS, electro hypersensitivity, mm -hmm. where these huge electric wires created electric and magnetic fields, and he is susceptible to them. And what are the symptoms? Can't sleep, um, irritability, anxiousness, um, restless legs, all these things. I mean, Nick, they matched up one, two, three. And I began to deduce and put it together that while, yes, absolutely, he and I are missing mom, something else, something exterior, a pollutant in his natural environment was causing my son dis-ease. And so that, Nick, is really what got me on the journey of dirty electricity being bad for the biological, which includes you and I. Yeah, and that's quite unfortunately for a lot of people, it's a personal sickness or symptoms that get people to listen to that situation. You know, I was yes. uh, interviewing Dr. Ben Lynch lately for the course, and he's a top um, researcher, doctor on epidemiology, uh, not epidemiology, but um, epigenetics. And he told me about his personal experience when he first realized that a cell phone was causing brain fog for him. And for a doctor and someone skeptical that cell phones could have an effect, it's very difficult because you're kind of second guessing yourself a little bit. Uh, how did you communicate that information for your family? And did you get any people that are skeptics that, well, it, it cannot really impact you because health authorities, the FCC wouldn't agree with you. Health Canada wouldn't agree with you even today. So did you get encounter some resistance when you first uh, hypothesized that maybe, you know, we're impacted by this electropollution? I got huge pushback. Um, mm. And it's, it's weird because people, there's very little middle. People either say, yeah, that's <laughs> correct, or they say, no, you're nuts. Um, <clears throat> there's something internally, though, I will say this. If you ask most people, would you like your house to be right under the power lines? Most people instinctually go, nah, nah, right? Yeah, yeah. Do you want the cell tower right on your house? Most people go, eh, no, probably not. Um, but the idea that, you know, it's, it's, it's bad for you or makes you sick or something definitely goes against mainstream physicians, right? It goes against yeah. mainstream belief. And, and who benefits from all this Wi-Fi? Who benefits from all this electricity? Well, the biggest companies in the world, right? Yeah. Amazon, Google, Microsoft, the, you know, T-Mobile, the Verizon, the most powerful companies on the planet um, may be put out if, if this got out or if it was widespread. And so it's certainly not propagated. Now, I was in another business. I was selling high quality lighting, uh, being a green tech manufacturer in my blood. Um, when I was growing up, my family manufactured solar panels. So being in the renewable energy green space was part of my, been part of my, my life's journey. Um, we were selling a really high quality light bulb to the Middle East. It was very expensive, but electricity was about 10 times more expensive to my customers overseas than it is in America where I live. Mm -hmm. And so I wanted to start bringing this high quality light into America, but I also got pushed back on that because electricity is so cheap. Why would they going to use it? Why would they buy it? Well, what made our bulb better was that it didn't create all the dirty electricity. It had a better conversion of the watts, the power that you buy, into lumens, into light, which is the byproduct that you want, when usually most of them also make a ton of heat. You don't want the heat, right? You want the light. Well, this conversion of watts into light with very little waste, very little distortion, and EMI and EMF is the definition of dirty electricity. So it's very odd that I am living two parallel paths here, Nick, without knowing that they're parallel paths. Wow. So this is my career path and then my child gets sick from dirty electricity. That's incredible. So explain it a bit for maybe the lay person who doesn't know about dirty electricity. You're saying that a light bulb takes electricity, right? You plug it into, well, on a circuit breaker, and then it gives light, but certain bulbs will put back on the line EMI, right? Electromagnetic interference, or it could it could be called the, these high frequency voltage transients in the engineering world. So talk a little bit about that, the definition of dirty electricity. You bet. Okay, so that's, that's another area where people say, well, you know, you're wearing a, a foil hat, that's pseudoscience. <laughs> yeah. 
but it's not pseudoscience. Let's, so let's say you've got a ham radio operator, and this is a guy that's trying to re receive a signal from you know a third of the way around the world. And so he needs really clean power. Why? Because of interference. Interference is when one signal laps over another signal. You have two signals now. That's real. And, and here are some examples that each of us has experienced in our life that allows each of us to know dirty electricity is real. When I was a kid, I would get home from school. My mom would run the vacuum. The vacuum cleaner would affect the TV picture. So now mm -hmm. the TV is it's all clear. My mom vacuums. Now it's messed up. Well, clean power was coming into the vacuum. The motor in the vacuum was distorting the power, distorting that wave, adding additional frequencies, putting it back on the neutral or the common. The television is also connected to the neutral or the common, and it would it would put lines in the TV. I think we've all experienced that. A lot of people say, well, I could hear my sister's blow dryer. My sister's in the bathroom getting ready for school, and I can hear her blow dryer on my radio. How? Same thing, right? Same thing. Or you're driving, you know, in town 30 years ago and you get the FM stations. Now you get out of town. You only get the AM stations. Okay. Well, now you turn on your phone. I see your printer, their printer, his Wi-Fi, their Wi-Fi. You know, you have, you have direct TV dish network. You have all these signals. Where do signals land? In antennas. Well, if, if, if a two foot antenna on the roof of your car worked, Nick, why would the copper wiring the mile of copper wiring in your home's electrical system, why would that not act as an antenna? Well, yeah. it does. It, it does. absolutely does. So, so what happened in light bulbs specifically is electricity comes in and then you're trying to um, excite this mercury. So you've got a, a ballast or a driver, an electronic component that's trying to excite this mercury vapor to turn this electrical current into lumens, into light. Well, the electricity doesn't just go into a device and disappear. A very small amount is converted into mechanical work or heat or resistance or something. Most of it goes back out on the line. Well, when it goes back out on the line, it's been degraded. It's been changed. It's been affected negatively by the operation and use of that device. So it goes back on the common. So your wiring has two wires. It's got the hot leg. And the common, you've got to complete that circle and do that path. So each time you add another electronic to it, you further degrade the quality of that signal. So once the electricity has been degraded through the use of a vice, that's what we call, by definition, dirty electricity. It's no longer clean. It has been somehow changed, deformed, degraded by the use of a device. And so you don't have one light bulb in your house. You got 25 and it's a collective effect. Now we've also got all this DC stuff. Your laptop, your phone, your tablet, your iPad, they all have a battery. If they have a battery, they're DC, they're direct current. So it it doesn't want a wave. It doesn't want that 60 Hertz frequency in the US or 50 in, in, in Europe. It wants a direct current. So each time we add one of these, it's got the little special cord, the little special unit to charge your phone, right? To put it into USB, to change it, that again changes the signal. So dirty electricity is absolutely real um, beyond contestation. Everybody that's watched TV or, or, or had a blow dryer on the radio knows that it's real. What we're really talking about now is it's been exasperated over the last 30 years. So, so 40 years ago in the US specifically, we used a light bulb invented by Thomas Edison and it was just an anode and a cathode, uh, uh, a tungsten filament and the electricity would move through the tungsten filament and create light. Now it created about 90% heat, 10% light, but that actually cleaned electricity because that resistor that turning it into heat would burn off a lot of the distortion. It would burn off that interference, turn it into mm -hmm. heat. Well, what happened is we took those away and we took away maybe in a home, 30 devices that cleaned electricity and added now a compact fluorescent, or an LED, 30 things that dirty the electricity. And so it completely changed the quality of electricity in the American home or in the home, excuse me, in, in the home of a person using light. And then it exacerbated further because we added all these DC devices, the phone, the laptops, the tablets, the computers. Um, and we have this proliferation of signals now 
landing on the electrical system that is our wiring. And today, um, dirty electricity is 200, 300x what it was 20 years ago. And so now we have to start thinking, does this affect human health? Yes. And there's a few things. First, is it is it true if I say this is mainly unregulated in the electronics world in a sense that manufacturers, the way I heard it from Alasdair Phillips, who has the advocacy group for EMF safety, uh, PowerWatch UK, he's an engineer, electrical engineer. He said the only reason in his mind that these electronics uh, put so much dirty electricity on the line is that manufacturers do not want to pay a few bucks for filters internally. Is that correct? That's absolutely correct. So the only reason they care about clean power for the most part is how it affects their device. They want <laughs> exactly. their device, right, to perform well and last a long time. So they meet standards um, for, but it's, it's yeah. literally, you meet a standard for the operation of their device. Since it's unregulated for health, you know, why worry about it? And, you know, manufacturers are try constantly trying to get their cost of goods down. They mm -hmm. could add uh, an X2 capacitor. They could add a suppression or safety cap. They could do something that would literally cost a dollar or two and and and, and oh, change it. But, that's too you bad. know, unless it's regulated. Yeah. So there's not only that. So I, I know there's or I think there's a lot of regulations about the um, the electromagnetic interference when it comes to airwaves, like how your radio tower would impact a cell tower because you have fights between telecoms and they say, you know, you have interference and engineers are really thinking about that. But inside the wires of your home and the electrical grid, it's, it's basically a free for all at the moment. And so what is it creating on an electrical efficiency standpoint because i think that's before even talking about health effects all these devices that are dirtying the electricity in your home aren't they increasing your electricity bill in some in, in some sense because the power that is dirtier is kind of a fuel that runs dirtier in a motor of your car right so it's it's less efficient and it is that a good analogy? It's, you're it's something you're like that. You're absolutely you're absolutely correct. Okay. Yeah. So so one of the things that we use a lot of times is a DVR recorder, right? So we can we can pause TV and watch TV. If you put your hand on your DVR, I guarantee you it's it's 20 or 30 degrees Fahrenheit warmer than your your room temperature. Mm -hmm. Sometimes when you charge your phone, it gets really warm. Not yeah, all the true. time, just sometimes. And you make a note of it, right? Sometimes the back of your refrigerator is very hot. So what happens is we have several types in, in alternating current. We have several types of power. We have um, real power, apparent power, um, um, reactive power. There, there are different types of power, and it's only the real power, the watts, the, the power in good power factor and good sine wave that's able to produce work. That reactive power and that apparent power, that gets converted into heat. Well, is heat free? No, heat's not free. And so anytime you're spending your watts and your money making something hot, two things happen. Number one, we potentially shorten the life or degraded the quality and performance of that electronic because it doesn't want to be hot. And number two, we've spent our dollars making that device hot. According wow. to the Department of Energy in the U.S., about 77% of power is consumed by, you know, the, performing the amount of work that you want to perform. You're making ice cream cold or you're lifting a garage door, right? 77% performs that work. 23% potentially is lost as heat soak in appliances and electronics and things like wow. that. So there's a big part of your bill that can be saved that if it's not used, making your things warm and not to be repetitive, but who doesn't want a clear TV picture? We all do. Who doesn't want clear and crisp audio sound? We all do. And who doesn't want these expensive tech devices that we've bought to last a long time and perform well? So by using the right kind of electricity filters, the device runs better. It runs cooler, quieter, lasts longer your bill goes down 
And if you're worried about the negative effects of the biological, you've reduced that by some potentially 90, 95%. It's measurable yeah. and you can see it, Nick. The, this is so important, you know, so the, it's, is the, the longevity of your electronics, electricity bill possibly, and then also the biological effects and the biological effects, if we, we don't have to really dive too deep into those, but there's sufficient science that would say, oh, let's be prudent with that. There's a few studies by Dr. Magda Havis in Canada. She's, yes. I would say, the main researcher looking at that. There's also a good book by Dr. Sam Milham, who's yes. a top uh, world-class epidemiologist who uh, did dirty electricity and the, and the disease of civilization. Yes. So a, a few good resources to get started in, in, the, in the show notes if uh, you want to look at the science. But but the short version is, you know, we're already impacted by electricity. We're impacted by cell phones. And uh, if you don't think so, maybe you should listen to some of my other videos or read my book. And it, all this stuff does something to the human body. It looks like one of the most important factors is not necessarily the type of frequency, not even the intensity of a certain uh, thing. It's how frequent it changes. It's all the harmonics. It's all the global chaos. And sometimes it's certain characteristics like the pulsation. When something is erratic or chaotic, it creates more biological effects. So it's more stressful and exactly linked to electro hypersensitivity or just a feeling that why am I feeling so drained in this home? <laughs> like my energy is low. And then I go to someone else's home for two days and I feel great. So it's an environmental factor that makes your home more stressful in an environment also during your sleep, right? These things impact you. So as far as biology goes, my thought is, you know, this is another thing to filter inside your home. Where SADIC comes in, and I wanted you to talk about your, your products and your company, but what I did not learn at first when I authored my book, of course, your your technology is not even mentioned in there. I didn't know that it existed, is how it differs from plugins that you can put throughout your homes. A lot of people, what they would do is buy plugins, put them everywhere and say, well, I filtered dirty electricity. The way I understand it for certain products that your company creates at the breaker panel, it's more akin to installing a whole home water filter where you say you know i'm gonna clean it from the municipality they send me dirty water with chlorine and maybe uh, fluoride and pharmaceutical drugs in there that cannot really be filtered out so i don't even trust them and that's what i would do i install reverse osmosis and then call it a day my entire home is clean so your approach is 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 more akin to that so maybe talk about the different products you offer and how is that different from just using plugins in a home, for example? You bet. And I'm going to get it kind of a long way to get there because sure. Sam Milhelm's book, Dirty Electricity, is one of the first publications that I bought that helped me mm. identify my son's problem. And Sam and I became pals over that. Oh, journey. really? Nice. I was able to call him. He took my call personally. <laughs> Somehow I was able to reach him and we, we, we created a friendship. Dr. Mercola is also something that sends some research and where a lot of my research began was not with human beings. It was with the biological, it was with dairy cows. Oh. So much study has been done with dairy cows because it's such a big business. Cheese, milk, ice cream, sour cream, cream cheese, right? Yogurt, all these things where they have proven beyond contestation, dairy gold, marigold, the big companies that the cow's production of milk, the quality of milk, taste, the volume, is affected by dirty electricity. <clears throat> Some of our best customers are indoor greenhouses and grows, a big strawberry in Canada, wow. a big tomato, um, marijuana. You want big produce, you need clean electricity. We've got documentation where the plant grows towards the light, the water, the nutrition, and away from the dirty electricity. So because wow. of the FDA and stuff, we've got to be very careful about what we say is harmful to humans, but you mm. can say it about cows, Nick. You can <laughs> say it about a strawberry, you know? Please purchase this product, even if you're not a cow, but it just works for cows. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. right? So, so even though <laughs> I'm not a cow, I am biological. Okay, yeah. so yeah. <clears throat> for, the, for, the, for the dairy and for the greenhouse grow, putting a bunch of plugins didn't make sense. What we wanted to do was get a, a, a spot in the, in the farm, in the, in the dairy, in the home, where mm -hmm. we know all the electricity is going to pass through this one place for sure. 
So we developed a line of wire and products that wire right at the utility panel, the distribution panel, because we know that all of the electricity is going to flow through that one point. So it does a couple of things. Number one, it stops or it, it affects all incoming power. All incoming power is boosted to that one wave, that 60 hertz or 50 hertz, depending on where you live, frequency, one sine wave. We boost the power factor into the 90s. We remove about 95 to 99% of interference, distortion, EMF, EMI, THD. We're filtering uh, these things. And then we're one of the only products on the market that not only is on phase A and phase B in the US or the phases having the incoming power, but also the neutral and the common. And that's really one of the key differentiators to our product. That's where the dirty electricity lives. You know, clean power, we talked about this for the most part, goes into the device, into the light, but it's degraded by it. It's, mm. it's affected by the use of that device and goes back, not on the phase, it goes back on the neutral. It goes back on the common. And so that cumulative effect um, is really where your dirty electricity lies. And that's what re returns the utility. Um, so we do make plug-in products because sometimes you're on the go. You want to take with you. Mm. Um, you're going you're gonna to give to your son or daughter that lives in a dorm or you're going to travel in a hotel room or um, you've got a room that has really high dirty electricity. We make those. But the vast majority of our sales are the engineered wire and products that happen at the breaker panel because we know there that we're able to affect all the electricity in that home or office. Yeah, that's very important. And it's also, you know what, I, I think it's a, it's, a, it's a better fix to the problem. Uh, the way I've been explained is by certain engineers who do not agree with the, the approaches of certain companies with plugins is that these plugins are really shifting the frequency outside a certain range that is considered biologically more active, but it doesn't guarantee that where it pushes it pushes it uh, is is really safe. So it's kind of a semi solution. Uh, you're doing something good with plugins, and I, I have plugins here. So I have I was a renter on this condo. Now I'm gonna become an owner. So Hopefully, I can install your technology here. And uh, do you think maybe it's a, a, a common question you're getting? I'm in a eight unit condo. Would it still get benefits from filtering at the panel, given everything the neighbors are setting me? I think it would filter out the neighbors as well, right? It does. It's it even it it, it helps the neighbors. So you know when <laughs> they're going to thank me. <laughs> they're going to thank you. So we we've had installs, and we've got eighty five thousand of our wire and unit installed in the U S. alone. We've been making them for 13 years. Um, we've had one customer get a unit and the neighbors comment, maybe the neighbor's power bill goes down 5% or goes down 10%. And they comment because the electricity is, it is connected, right? Mm. It is, yeah. when, when you live in a neighborhood and you're on a subdivision, that electricity is connected. So when you wire something like that, the panel, not only do you benefit yourself, you, you do benefit your neighbors at a limited sense too. And also something else that happens when you have um, a filter plugged in in a bedroom or something, and, and you're right, they do help. But what happens is that also becomes a little bit of a hot spot in that you have another electrical device plugged in there. And some people that are really sensitive, they can't have a filter in their bedroom. They yeah. can't have it close to their bed or where they sit or something. Where at the utility panel, we already know this is a hot spot. Our utility panel is in our garage or maybe by our hot water tank. And we know that this is a place where there's going to be high electric fields and stuff. So by installing it there, um, whatever hotspot the device might make, you've centralized it. You've centralized, you know, these fields and these things to a place that had already existed before. If you didn't have it in your bedroom and now you bring a plug-in unit there, you may exacerbate that a little bit unwittingly in creating a little bit of a node or a hotspot there with that electric device. So another reason the wirings, I think, sell so well and perform so well is we're isolating that in a spot where it was already isolated. Yeah, that's a good point. And uh, I'm just thinking about all the sources of dirty electricity and my, my approach usually, same thing with Wi-Fi, same thing with all 
the different sources out there first try to reduce the sources themselves yes. so sources of dirty electricity please let me know in your experience what are the worst sources uh, that are producing it and also maybe talk about the fact that there, the electricity coming from the power grid sometimes is dirty itself because of various factors, it might be a factory nearby, there might be neighbors who use a bunch of things and they're sending you their dirtiness and it gets dirtier and dirtier as you go along the same, I think, the, well, the same line on the street. So please talk about that fact and what in your personal opinion and experience are the worst producers of that dirty electricity? Okay, this this is an excellent question. So So sometimes people want to say, well, you're just you're trying to sell stuff. You're trying to sell something. No, we engineer products because this problem exists. You don't need to start there. If, if, if you think smoking is bad for you, the first place, stop smoking. Yeah. That's number one. Number two, stop going to bars or places where there is a lot of smoke. So yeah. absolutely, the, 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 the best way to have clean electricity is not to buy filters. The best way is to just not have things that produce it, right? That's the best way to get there. So the things that cause it the most, number one in most cases is usually lighting. Mm -hmm. So most lighting is CFL, compact fluorescent lamp, the curly Q bulb. Those are absolutely terrible for the creation of dirty electricity, harmonics, distortion, simply because of the way they operate. They have a ballast that raises the voltage and then that voltage has to arc and excite that gas. And by the operation of that creates a lot of dirty electricity and LED. They're very efficient, but they are a light emitting diode. A diode by definition is a one way door. So they're strobing. A lot of people don't know that they are, they are strobing at 50 or 60 Hertz, which is clipping that wave and creating dirty electricity. DC devices. We talked about this, anything with a battery, um, computers, switch mode, power supplies. So your, your, your computer and your um, gaming console, and these things are huge culprits. And they're bigger culprits like your phone and stuff when they're charging for not only affecting the electricity that they're connected to, but also the fields that they generate and give off. So a lot of people will keep their phone plugged in by their bed, but they put it on airplane mode. They think they're okay. No, since it's plugged in, you're exacerbating the size of that field. Um, you don't want a smart meter on your house. You want to turn your Wi-Fi off at night. Now, my son can't have the Wi-Fi and stuff in the house. He's got to really limit his exposure. It doesn't affect me the same way, Nick. I can have a little bit more, but I don't sleep in it. Yeah. So, yes, the first thing we need to do is we need at static. We call them the culprits. What are the dirty electricity culprits? There's a nice list in your book. You give a great list in your book. Um, we've got some stuff too of, you know, the lighting and the, the switch mode power supplies, computers. Number one, be cognizant of those things. Number two, turn them off. Number three, don't sit or rest in them because this field now has two things, right? It has uh, an intensity, how, how far do I have to go to get away from it, right? Or how hard is it punching me? And what's the frequency of it? So like I always tell people, if I hit my arm like this, um, after a while, even if I'm pretty gentle, it's going to get sore, might even get a bruise. But if I move it like this, oh, I'm charging $25 an hour. That's a massage. That's nice, <laughs> right? Yeah. So, so if I'm moving, it doesn't get me as much. I start to sit at my desk. It's affecting my biology more. I'm laying at night. It's affecting my biology more. So another part of that is where you rest, where you sit, where you sleep. These need to be havens of clean electricity. And that doesn't come from filters. That comes from turning off and getting rid of culprits. That's number yeah. one. Okay. So with that being the case, and that's the first thing that we're going to do, sometimes we can't control that. I can only control what's in my house. I can't go to my neighbors and turn off their solar system, which <laughs> is a terrible culprit, right? Yeah. Um, so, so to not blame the power company where I live, the power comes from hydro. It's very clean, but it's it's a hundred miles away, right? It's 120k or whatever. So, um, so what happens is it goes by car washes and beauty schools. It goes by, you know, all these things so that through no fault of theirs, I'm not blaming them, just by the way it's it's powered and been degraded by devices along the way, it is dirty when it gets to me. 
And that's a combination of what the grid is delivering and truly what my neighbors are doing. So that's why, you know, a wire and filter the panel becomes so important too, because the first thing that I do, I take action, I relieve, turn off or manage the use of the culprits in my home, get them away from my resting and sleeping areas. But now for the stuff that I can't get from my neighbors, this is when you might want to start talking about filters as a way to simply protect yourself from what's bombarding you externally. Yeah, that's, that's so great. And you know, I've I've heard nothing but good things about the the whole home panel uh, filters, uh, like the Power Perfect box. Uh, since we started recommending that to our uh, Electro Pollution Fix members, uh, please talk about that product in particular. How, how does it work? How how's it? And if it's too technical, you let me know. There's <laughs> probably so many things that are happening at once in that box. But basically, please talk about the um, the actionable steps, like. People need to install that box at home. What do they do? They, they hire an electrician, and it would be where 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 would they install it, etc. Sure. So let me first brag on my engineering team. So when I I have an applied science degree and a business degree, and I was an engineering school, uh, I was studying to be a power systems engineer. But when I went to build this electronic, I instantly knew that I had to team build. Um, I was you know personal development. Um, I read a lot of books. Um, one of the things that I consistently hear as a business owner, um, as a CEO, as a manager, that you need to build your team. Um, so one of my engineers, Brian Jackson, um, he has an MBA and he has an engineering degree, and he was a vice president of engineering for Idaho Power. He's literally the guy that put the solar panels on the roof of the of the utility. I mean, of the of of the power company. Um, Bradley Layton, Dr. Bradley Layton is a PhD engineer. He got his undergrad degree at MIT, which is the number one engineering school in the United States. Um, he got his PhD in biomedical engineering from Michigan, which is a very prominent um, uh, engineering school. Um, Dr. Lynn Churchill has a PhD in mathematics from University of Washington. I put together the finest team of engineers that I could find to help me not just build a good product, but build a great one. And I talked to Dave Stetzer at um, Stetzer Iser and looked at his filters and talked to him at great length about some changes that I initially didn't want to just build my own thing. I initially wanted to talk to some of the guys and I'll admit it right now, I'm not crazy about Dave Stetzer's products. I think, I think they're a little simple, but I'm standing on the shoulders of great men like him. And I will take nothing from him because he forged a trail when you had to be brave. Yeah. Right. He forged yeah. a trail on a dusty road when he was going it alone. So I, I love and respect what he has done. Just that the product hasn't been upgraded in 20 years. Um, I love Gene at Green Wave. He is one of the nicest, funnest guys you've ever met. If you're at a barbecue, you want to stand by Gene from Green Wave because <laughs> he's fun. He has a big heart. He's a nice person. Their product is very simple. It just doesn't have a lot of component sets. Um, it doesn't have a lot of different component types. So it's really looking for one bandwidth that's doing one thing. And our electricity has changed so much in the 15 years that those products have existed. We've actually changed our product twice since we started 13 years ago. And we're about to launch Gen 3 because when we first launched, it was compact fluorescent lighting. And now it's LED. There wasn't the big crypto mining that's changed the, the look of electricity in the US or legalized indoor marijuana grows, which has changed electricity. We are in a constant evolving, changing um, landscape and nobody that we know of has changed their products even once in 15 years. We've changed ours twice in 13. So that's incredible. You've yeah. got to be, you've got to be on the front edge of this. And so we have three filter sizes and three filter types. And if you look in those other products, uh, not that you would, but if you were to ever be naughty and open one with a Dremel tool, you'll see one product. You'll see one one filter. Mm -hmm. um, and so like our plug-in model, for example, rather than having, you know, one filter of one type and one manufacturer, ours has eight in two different types and sizes and then a, a different component set completely that does something else. You know, one's looking for um, the, the voltage wave and the other is looking for the amperage wave. And so they don't have products to to affect both. And how big is the, the frequency band that you're trying to affect? So also, like if you've got one filter 
and one breaks, how many do you have? Um, our wire and products has a minimum of 21 filters. So even if one did fail because of a hard life or was poorly manufactured um, by its manufacturing component company, you're still at about 95% effective rate. That's mm -hmm. where we can also give the product a 10 year warranty because we, we've got tests that show at, at year 11, you're still at about a 98% effective net rate. You're, you, you have very little degradation and it should be robust because that's its job. I used to love the Timex commercial. It takes a licking and keeps on ticking. They used to have an elephant stand on it, right? You want something that's very robust because in our opinion, this is protecting your family's life. And I don't say that lightly. That's my experience. This is to protect my home and family's life. So we need something that's very robust. So rather again, forgive me for being repetitive, rather than one filter of one type, we have multiple filters of multiple types looking for the voltage and the amperage waves and doing it over a larger frequency scale. I don't think we have any competition. Yeah, that's that's tremendous. So what happens when you install it? Uh, um, if, if you purchase a product, it's uh, how, how big it is? Uh, where do people put it? And does it require the help of an electrician or is that something a layman can do? So that's a great question. So it's about the size of a shoebox. Okay. And it does wire at the utility panel. And for an electrician, it's an exceedingly easy installation. It has a mounting bracket, so it has four mounting screws. So you'll drill four screws into the sheetrock or the wood or whatever it's on. And then it has three wires. It has a red and a black. This is in the US. It has a red and a black that land on their own breaker, red for A, black for B, and then white for the neutral. Now in Europe, it just has red and blue. Red for the phase, blue for the neutral. You mm -hmm. turn the breaker on, takes about 20 minutes. Does an electrician need to do it? I can't answer that because that depends on what the rules are where yeah. your house is. And so we usually have an electrician do it because he's very familiar. Um, it takes about half an hour um, and is wired right there at the panel. Um, if your panel's full, oftentimes it can go like if you have a hot tub, it's got a little panel there or your air conditioner's got a little panel, right? Or your swimming pool might have a little panel. Um, uh, you might have a pump house, a little panel, um, really any place you can get onto all the electricity, which means both phases, this can be installed, goes on its own breaker, again, made in the USA, 10 um, year warranty, and it's guaranteed to perform. So let's say for you, um, you're, you're seeing this, you're not seeing that maybe the best thing that we have here is the wonderful tech support. We've got people that you can call, not a machine not someone overseas, our office. We answer the phone. We say, yes, look for this, look for that. Here's how you want to troubleshoot. Here are your culprits. Here's how it's going to work the best. So you're never stranded. You're never on your own because electricity is weird and everybody's environment's different because our neighbor is doing something different and we have different things in our life. And the outcome, it's not just to sell your product, the outcome is to sell your product and get your DE super low so that you're happy and you can recommend it to your pal. Yeah, yeah, and that's that's incredibly important. And I think, you know, the cost um, at, at first when I when I saw the the investment, Brian uh, has has your your product, Brian Hoyer, my colleague on it, on his uh, Shielded Healing uh, website, and I saw it and I was like, oh my god, that's that's kind of steep for a product for dirty electricity. However, if you calculate how much electricity you could save technically, if you save just a little bit of electricity, well, that's kind of a, a f like free money that's gonna reimburse itself over 10 years if it's a 10 year warranty. So in reality, <laughs> now that I think of it for myself, the unit might be almost free depending on how much electricity it, it saves you. If it's even $5 per month, that would still be something. Over 10 years, that's 600. I mean, that's a nice yes. rebate. So. Uh, talk about this. Uh, what what results have you seen in reduction of electricity bill? Uh, and this probably it depends. It must be highly situational, depending on how much electricity there, there was in the first place. But let's say I'm in Montreal, eight unit condo. Everyone is using everything wrong, right? <laughs> Can I expect a good reduction in in the bill or? Absolutely. And it's not like you have to wait to see it. I mean, if you can read a meter and we sell meters online, you're going to see that it's working right now. So mm. with 85,000 installed, 
we always tell people we can't guarantee a specific number sure. because again, your life is different. Like, are you a single guy or are you a family with five little kids? And they've always got the fridge door open and they're looking for a popsicle and the garage door is going up and down. You're using lots of laundry. The air conditioner's on. How old is your air conditioner? How new is it? How old is the freezer in your garage? Mm. How new is it? Right. So, but mathematically, we, we feel we can prove an 8% savings mathematically. And that's mostly just in reduced heat. Um, that's usually just in not having um, heat soak in appliances, uh, heat soak in your DVR in the back of your TV that then your air conditioner has to fight. But I'll tell you this, most of our customers after 15 years in business and 85,000 installed, most of our customers see a mid teens, 13 to 16. We probably have 2000 written testimonials, um, where they, they really do pay attention. Um, and so mid teens for the most part is actually the savings that at a, at a one year trip, because it's different in the, in the winter uh, where I live, you're using heat, uh, in the summer you're using, you know, to make cold, but in the spring and the fall, your, your house is, it's, it's beautiful where I live. And so the, the saving signature is different over those months at the end of a, a one year true up, it should be low teens, which probably means a two or three year ROI with a 10 year guarantee, it's going to pay for itself five times, maybe three times. It's, it's ultimately yeah. kind of free. I mean, you have to upfront it, but you do get the money back. You do, you get it back. That's uh, that's an important part of it. That's the reality. You're you're saving your health, and then you're also saving money. I, I was just calculating eight percent of my my electricity bill is around one hundred fifty per month Canadian here and in, in this place. Maybe the isolation isn't so good in the winter months. It goes like I don't know. Like we can pay two hundred a month in in the winter months. Of course, we have almost zero Fahrenheit at some point, so it's understandable. But eight uh, percent represents about over over ten years, easily fifteen hundred or two thousand dollars, which is the cost of the unit uh, <laughs> if you if you get it at the moment. So it's uh, it's interesting that that you have a technology that that can also. I mean. This is this is a real green stuff in reality. Uh, when we talk about people who are environmentally conscious, and I know here in Quebec, you know, it's it's a lot of people are we're, we're composting, we're recycling, we're we're thinking about okay, do, don't open the fridge too much, don't keep the showers on for like 30 minutes, and it it's it's in our blood a little bit to be environmentalists. So in reality, there's also a good thing to say regardless of your stance on dirty electricity or even my work, like if you want to also help save the planet, it's like install something that you're where you'll consume less electricity. I think it would be the responsible thing to do for all homeowners. And then you save money. So you're, you're happy with it as well. So it's, it's also just an argument that I did, I'm just thinking out loud. I didn't even think about that, but that's very important because it, of course, everyone's consuming too much. Electricity has a, as a cost, to nature to produce whether it's hydro a little bit cleaner or coal or nuclear and if you we can all reduce how much electricity we we consume well it's it, there's something to be said there that that is super important and if on top of that you reduce the sources because now you're aware and you listen to to bd and you learn these sources and maybe you switch out your cfls for incandescence like we we talk about in our course then you're doing good for the planet like this is very important and maybe you can touch about it for two minutes or something, but uh, you mentioned CFL. And I think a lot of people, maybe we didn't address the elephant in the room because a lot of people will be surprised. CFLs, I thought these were the great, like the, the super environmentally friendly bulbs. But, you know, in reality, if I understand correctly, they do save electricity individually, but then they cost more because they send their electricity back on the line. So it's, it's kind of bizarre. That's exactly correct. So touching on what you've talked about, the most important watt for the environment is the non-watt. The non-watt, the watt that we didn't have to produce yeah. from coal yeah. or anything else. So just by the fact that the, the unit will lower watts, we, we have an impact on the environment that we all, we all know that we could be better stewards, right? So the CFL, the compact fluorescent, was really promoted in bandy hood as this environmentally conscious thing because it uses less watts it could not be further from the truth so first of all in the incandescent bulb 
Um, you just had an anode and a cathode, a power in, power out, and then a little tungsten filament. And you, you push electricity through it and you get 95% heat, you get 5% light. So, you know, maybe 160 watts, I think is what most of us use, 60 watts to light your room. Well, the compact fluorescent might only be 20 watts. So rather than using 60 watts, you're using 20. So it's green, I'm doing air quotes, in that it uses less watts, but nothing could be further from the truth. There's nothing harmful in the incandescent light bulb. Um, the mercury vapor amalgam gas in the CFL is toxic, it's, it's poisonous. So imagine if you dropped this now and you broke it and you stepped on it, and you cut your foot, it could really hurt your foot or make you sick because it's got poison in it. Well, now people were supposed to um, dispose of those properly. Who did? And, 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 and how do we know that the people that got them, that they did? So you're bringing these poisonous chemicals from China where they're not mined um, consciously or, or, or you know, with, with green ecology in mind. They're mined however they want to mine them, which is hard on the planet A. We ship them to Montreal, you use it for six months. They were supposed to last 10,000 hours. I'm, I'm very careful when I say always or never, I'm gonna say, I never saw one last 10,000 hours, right? Mm. And now it's gonna go into landfill where it's gonna break, it's, can it leach into groundwater? Can it leach into the soil? Can it leach into the river? Can it re leach into your well? I'm just asking the question here, what is green about that you know no, it, it, it's it's it, a bad idea it's a bad it's, idea it was a bad product it's a bad product yeah and then dirty it does create dirty electricity which in reality would would consume as that's much right. or more electricity than an incandescent that's in, right in so mind? i i read a really great article uh, published in europe about the fact that they had changed from incandescent to cfl so what had happened is, yes, they lowered the watts, but they created so much dirty electricity. And their power factor is very low. Their power factor is about 50, which means they have to, you have to move twice as much electricity through them to get the same result. So what it did is where the incandescent bulb raises the power factor, it actually makes the power factor for everything in your home better. Hmm. You turn on an incandescent bulb, it starts filtering the electric. They're actually electricity filters all by themselves. They wow. begin to lessen the dirty electricity and raise the power factor, which makes everything run better now. So the back of your TV is cooler. The back of your fridge is cooler. Your, your phone charge is cool. But now with these other bulbs, yeah, they use less watts initially, but they lowered the power factor. They raised the distortion. Now everything is hot. Everything is hot. You're moving more current. You have more losses to Ohm's law of resistance. And so in the article I read, they said, is there any true net net gain? to Europe. Yes, we use less watts in doing it, but our electricity is so dirty now that everything else is hot. Did we really gain anything? <laughs> if we did, it was negligible. But when now yeah. we have all this poison in our landfill and the dirty electricity. So with with a filament, the, the electricity goes through the tungsten filament. With, with a fluorescent light, it has to jump. It has to arc. That's why the voltage has to be higher. It has to arc. And when it arcs, pow, that's how it excites that gas. So it's changing the voltage. It's changing the frequency. You talked about that earlier. That change is bad. That when you start changing things, when you start changing the way it operates, changing its flow, changing its frequency, that's what it's, that's bad. That's how they run. <laughs> yeah, exactly. That's how they work. And, and right, they, they turn on and off, I think, uh, in the tens of thousands of times per second. So also something could be said about the flicker rate of these and the impact, and uh, we won't even get into those because I see the time running out here. We're <laughs> almost to the, uh, to the hour. Something we talk about in, in, in the course, but the short story is the flicker rate can also make your brain a little bit too overexcited or it, it's, it's more biological effects because, again, it just makes that light that much more artificial for biology. And one of the reasons I'm, I'm weird like uh, Bono today is that I wear the, those slightly blue blockers from uh, Blue Blocks because I'm kind of trying to mitigate the computer screen and I, I realize I have more energy. And again, each time you're trying to make things a little bit simpler, like your electricity simpler and cleaner, and also the environment when it comes to Wi-Fi cleaner and simpler, 
it just calms down the biology and that's uh, that's a very very simple version so if you have a light bulb that chops the signal and puts something back on the line and makes your electricity dirty on a environmental standpoint doesn't make sense on a biological standpoint doesn't make sense either so it's just a failed technology and that's still uh, that's still going on unfortunately i i i think in the future it will be seen as a very a very big mistake uh that governments have kind of fall into or fallen into or, or listened to the wrong engineers or they kind of thought they were something something good or maybe someone wanted to make a buck sometimes yeah. that happens too in humanity where someone said oh my product is very good i'm gonna sell it to you with marketing tactics and everyone bought it and then everyone uh, woke up 30 years later and said oops we have yes. a bunch of mercury in the environment so um, BD, it's, it's been amazing. We could go on and on. Maybe I'm going to have you uh, back for, for a two-parter. Maybe uh, if you want, I think our next conversation could be focused on solar panels exclusively if you, if you want because we didn't yes. touch on it. I had a few questions about that, but I know your products also uh, uh, take care of that and you have specialty products uh, solely for that use, I think. And I, I know a lot of people want to go green, use solar, and that's a good idea. But also, I've heard of several people who install those and then the dirty electricity is so high that the trade-off is is is, is hard to, to deal with biologically. So let's just keep that as a teaser. If you want to be on the show, uh, I, this is an official invite. Uh, and please uh, let us know your website, where can people learn more about your company, your products, and all that good thing. Yes, I, I would love to come back and talk about solar because Thank when you, you have solar, your numbers are exacerbated by about 100 times. So That's incredible. Yeah. Ed, for education, you can find us on our main website, SATIC, S-A-T-I-C, U-S-A dot com. That's also our YouTube channel, SATIC USA, one word. And then to look for the products, you can find us on staticshield.com. And of course, Brian Hoyer and Shielded Healing is a premier static dealer. Um, and he is very uh, wise and, and he can he can help you land on the right product as well. We recommend his, his page as well. Tremendously. Uh, yeah, and Brian can also, I, I know he's a, he's someone that I recommend. Obviously, I'm I, I'm biased because I love this guy and now he's, he's one of my uh, top collaborators on my course and a co-teacher, a friend of mine now. And uh, he, he, if he sells the static products, he will also give support to people who want to install it. And I know your company gives tremendous support as well. So if you purchase a product like that and you're concerned about installing it or figuring it out, don't worry because I, I know for a fact these people are are uh, so helpful and they won't leave you hanging. This is a process that is will be pretty straightforward and that uh, also is something will last for years. So I'm excited. I didn't know uh, something surprising. I have to tell before we close out is that it's shoebox size. In my in my mind, it was like that large because you can never see when you see the picture. And I was like, okay, will will this really uh, jive with my wife who? <laughs> doesn't want to see that initially near the breaker panel it's it's in her office but now i'm more strongly considering it because it's kind of more subtle so i'll see if we can put it in the closet and and call it a day I, it would be i want to walk the talk so uh, i have to install it and then report back on my results so bd thank you so much and uh let's let's uh meet again a little bit uh later uh in in this uh, this smart attack adventure to talk about solar panels thank you so much I look forward to it. Thank you, Nick. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.